Hey guys, this is Richard at Reefs.com. Thank you for joining me on this amazing day at Reefapalooza Orlando 2024. And I am here in Reef Nutrition's booth with one of my good friends, Chad. Chad, how are you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, great show great so see far. You, man. Amazing. How was the show for you today? Oh my gosh, it was just packed. And it seemed like the show space, mm -hmm. you know, all the booths were spaced out properly and and all the attendees were kind of just in different nooks and crannies and areas of the of the show floor and we weren't really overwhelmed. It was a nice slow trickle of people. So we got to have good, meaningful conversations, good interactions. Because awesome. people always come with the questions. Of course. If you haven't heard of Reef Nutrition in the last few years, you must have been living under a rock in our hobby. So, but I'm pretty sure many of us are used to your products by now, but there has been a lot of inconsistent like answers because everybody have a very different experience because depending on the size of their tank, their animals, and etc. But I figured this would be a good chance to sit down with the paw father himself and learn about the products and how to properly feed our animals according to your direction. Yeah, absolutely. So, so on every single um, label mm -hmm. are the feeding instructions. Right. And we give a range. And we always recommend you start off at the lowest end of that range. Sure. You know, what, like you said, you know, all tanks are different right. when it comes to the mouths to feed and the biological aspect. Right. And so without knowing how many corals are in a tank and how many fish you have in a tank and all these and other variables. And what kind variables, of filtrations that yeah, you have. Yeah, what kind of waste export, filtration, mm -hmm. things like that. So we always recommend you start off conservatively. Yeah. And so with like the coral feeds, the yeah. oyster feast and the phyto feast, mm -hmm we recommend one teaspoon per 100 gallons yeah. per day is a very good conservative starting point. Yeah. That's about five milliliters right. for a dose. And what's awesome about the liquid suspension is that you can measure the dose. Right. You know, you don't have to weigh it or anything like that. And you know, there's, there are things that you can buy to measure in milliliters. You right. know, little graduated cylinders, little flasks, even pipettes yeah. have little graduations on them and you right. can find those in the industry. And, and what's great about being able to measure the, uh, the, the, the dose yeah. is that, let's say you don't have a lot of animals, you're starting at that dose and you're starting to see you know, phosphate or something or nitrates creeping up mm -hmm. and you're not, you haven't changed anything else, what you can do is you can back off on the dose. You can right. feed less. And as long as you're measuring it, right. you know what you did yesterday, then you can adjust the dose and, and do less that day. Right. Or you can split that dose up into two feedings. Mm -hmm. Then that way the corals and your filter feeders have enough time to consume that food yep. in, you know, in a certain amount of time. And then feeding them a small amount again yep. at the end of the day, they can consume that food as well in, in, you know, in the right amount of time. Gotcha. Um, and so that's, you know, those are things that are very helpful for our customers because, you know, that's the first thing you ask. Right. How much do I feed? And with liquid feeds, it yeah. can be pretty, you know, there's a lot of unknowns. Right. And in an oyster feast, what I have been like hearing from a lot of different coral farmers out there, a lot of people think that it's just a strictly food for an LPS and such, but it's actually not. Even the acros seems to love oyster feast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the oyster feast um, is our best coral food. Mm -hmm. Like it, it covers nearly every coral and filter feeder that you could have in a reef tank. Yeah. It's, it's just a superfood. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is you know, it's these very small oyster eggs. There's a lot of amino acids, a lot of fats, lipids, mm -hmm. things like that, that are very stimulating the corals. They recognize this as a food source. Yeah. And so you get good polyp extension, they go right. into feed mode, and, and you can see these things with your own eyes. Right. Um, and that, that's another really cool thing about this because it's really hard to watch a coral eat right. in, in real time. Yep. Um, but to see them like come alive, become active, mm -hmm. um, is, is really, it's really neat. It's rewarding and you know, oh, we, all, sure. we all get a lot yeah. of reward from feeding things. And yep. so feeding fish is a totally different thing from feeding corals. So, yeah. Right, right. And then now let's talk about like Fido. And I actually have a couple of different questions um, that I wanted to ask you. So in what application it's good to feed as, you know, like there, I know you have two different versions. One is viable option, one is a non-viable option. Which one is a better for which applications? So when it comes to feeding, um, the inverts that you're feeding to, the filter feedy, feeders and corals and things like that, they're, they're very much opportunistic. Mm -hmm. They're gonna eat things that are not alive. They're gonna eat things that aren't even like whole organism. You know, there are people that feed, you know, powders, bacteria, um, bits and pieces of other animals that have been mm -hmm. crushed up. Yeah. They're, you know, those, those are coral foods. Uh, and so when it comes to phytoplankton, as far as the food goes, um, it's got the right particle size. It's got mm -hmm. a wide variety of nutritional value. There's different species in that product. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it works really well as a, as a food. 
and this, um, this product is good for at least nine months in the refrigerator. The cells stay totally intact. Yeah. They're not alive, but they're not degrading. Right. And so everything that was in that cell is exactly as it was when that was alive. Mm -hmm. And so when the animal eats it, it gets all that nutrition. As far as the live goes, yeah. there are people, and a lot of it is anecdotal because it really would be really difficult to test this, yeah. is does live phyto really take out enough phosphate, take out enough nitrite, nitrate, ammonia mm -hmm. um, to make a significant impact on water quality in any given tank? Right. And we know that would be really hard to do a one-size-fits-all right. because the chemistry in, in our tanks can Everything be vastly is different, different right. from one tank to the next, right. as well as the biological component that's consuming that phytoplankton, breaking it down and releasing some of the waste right. you know, from whatever it didn't assimilate. Right. Um, and so there are people that believe that the ph live phytoplankton will help clean up their water quality mm -hmm. and outcompete nuisance algae in the aquarium. Right. But um, there's no way definitively to say, oh yeah, yeah. that's all you got to do. Yeah. How much would you have to, I mean, I, I figured in, in order to make that kind of a significant difference in an aquarium, like a, like a nutrient change, you would have to dose significant amount in order to achieve that. Yeah, it, I mean, it seems like you would have to do that. You would have to, you know, d green up the tank, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and then after the phytoplankton takes up those things, mm -hmm. that is still in your tank. Right. It's all still in there. Mm -hmm. And so you either extract the algae with, mm -hmm. you know, very small particle filters mm -hmm. um, while your animals are consuming it. But remember, the animals are consuming it right. and they're not assimilating the entire thing into their body. Mm -hmm. They're also releasing waste, yeah. you know, mo ammonia and the proteins are getting out. Um, and so, so you still got to have ways to export that. Right. Uh, and so we always just say, you know, practice good husbandry techniques, do Absolutely. your water changes, have yeah. good waste export uh, and make sure you're on top of water quality testing. Um, yeah. I would never tell anybody, just feed live phyto mm -hmm. and all of your troubles will go away. Yeah. Because we all know that it's multiple pieces to the right. puzzle when it comes to this. Right. So what would, if you were to recommend to a new hobbyist, would you re like lead them towards the live phyto or de uh, dead phyto? Yeah, I would just lead them towards the concentrate, the dead phytoplankton. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And I really like the, how concentrated and thick this thing is. Right. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly concentrated. We have the most biomass of any... Um, mixed phytoplankton product on the market and it's because we're you know a large-scale phytoplankton facility right and then for those of you guys who hasn't seen our like, previous videos they actually create all these phytos for all the oyster farms that we eat all around the world yeah. like this is made so the animals that eats this is made for human consumption so I mean how it's made you know it takes a big factor in order for those farms to put their trust in this product so the next on the list, I mean, I think this is a little bit closer to you in your heart. Let's talk about your pods. Yeah, yeah, I'm a I big know. fan of live pods. Yes, <laughs> I know you have multiple, multiple different pods. What, first of all, what are some of the live pods that you guys have here? Right, so we, um, so we have two copepods. These are mm -hmm. copepods, a lot of people call them pods. There's a lot of different kinds of pods. Right. So in this case, these are copepods. Um, we have two species that we sell into the aquarium hobby. Uh, one of them is Tigriopus californicus. Everybody knows it as Tigger, Tigger pods. pods. Yep. This is one of the most famous live copepod in, in the industry. Yep. Um, and, and this animal is excellent for you know, keeping mandarin dragonets well-fed and happy. Or like uh, smallmouth for, anthias, yes, small anthias, rasses. Yes, anthias, rasses, yep. exactly. Seahorse, pipefish, even butterfly fish. Mm -hmm. Helps butterfly fish get to starting to eat, yep. things like that. So. They are a great live food source for animals that are really picky, really finicky, yeah. or an animal that you want to get to eat and mm -hmm. then take it to the next level and get it to eat other things. Yeah. Uh, and, and we are consistently producing these. We come out with a new batch every single week. Mm -hmm. We uh, grow them at our facility, at our farm in, in Silicon Valley, San Jose, California, mm -hmm. and we feed them nothing but phytoplankton that we grow ourselves. This is an animal that you would typically see in a retail store in a refrigerator because right. they can tolerate cold temperatures. It slows right. them down, they don't consume all the uh, oxygen in the bottle, and they also don't starve. Yeah. Um, and so we take, you know, we use that cold temperature to our advantage. Uh, and, and also these guys are rich in carotenoids and fatty mm -hmm. acids, which copepods are notorious for. They're very rich in these things. Uh, and the carotenoids pass on to the animal that eats them and enhance pigmentation, act as an antioxidant. So there are a lot of benefits from even corals eating, eating right. live copepods, any fish mm -hmm. eating them, um, even other invertebrates. So there are a lot of benefits 
to the animals that are consuming these. Right. Um, as well as the, you know, this animal becoming part of your ecosystem and your, in your tank. I think you touched up on something that, that actually kind of piqued my interest because you said that even corals uh, benefit greatly from this. Yeah, so this is this is the refrigerated version. Yeah. Um, and so what we did was we harvest the tigger pods every week. Mm -hmm. And whatever we have left over, we were typically just throwing it out. Mm -hmm. And we were like, why don't we save this all this biomass? Because right. it's, it's, it's aquaculture. It's right. totally unique. Yeah. And we were like, why don't we turn that into another product? Yeah. And this could be useful to people that maybe have a mandarin that they want to wean on to something that isn't alive. Right. Well, they could use the same exact animal. That That's you get not a, like alive. A pipette and just yeah, the right. And get it right in front of their mouth, or yeah. put it right in front of where they're sitting. Mm -hmm. And it's the same exact animal. It's just not alive. So yeah. we were like, wow. So those people could help get that mandarin to eat something that isn't alive, mm -hmm. and then move on to other food types. So there was that. It's also it's also great, like you like you were saying, instead of somebody buying many many bottles of these. Yeah. Um, and spending a ton of money, they can just buy this one bottle of Tigger Feast yeah. and feed it to their corals. They can target feed or broadcast feed. Um, and what's really cool about this product, Tigger Feast, is this yeah. is 54 bottles of Tigger Pods in really? one bottle. That's how much biomass it is. I mean, I thought I thought yeah. that this had a lot of pods in it already. Yeah, no, this has a lot. Yeah, just wow. multiply 54 times 3,000, and yeah, you can imagine how many wow. are in here. And this this bottle, this product is good for at least a year really? in the refrigerator. Um, and so that's been very popular with people with NPS coral tanks. Right, right, I can uh, imagine. Even acros will eat that, uh, and, and, and not just fish. I mean, and also really good for anthias and yeah. smallmouth fishes. So. That's really awesome. I mean, like, I didn't think, kind of like, put that together for some reason. I just always thought of a tigger pods and pods in general as more of a fish food, finicky fish food. That's what I was always thinking and using it as. But I think that's a good way to, for me to target feed some of my corals. And I think a lot, a lot of my LPS corals would definitely, definitely love that. Absolutely, yeah. And the, the only downside for those that are watching is that this product is not in every store that carries our products. Okay. In fact, there are a lot of stores that just carry Tigger Pods. Mm -hmm. They don't carry anything else. So you can find this online. There are online uh, market marketers that have this product available. Saltwaterquarium.com, Bulk Reef Supply, uh, some of those stores. Even some, some retail stores yeah. Um, we'll get it in and sell it online because they have a better customer base for online purchasing. So, gotcha. so that's how you that's how you're going to find this product typically. Gotcha. And then you said the shelf life is one year. You said at right? least a year. At yeah. least a year. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Now let's see what's over here. We got the ROE. This is the real ocean oceanic eggs. Yep. What what kind of eggs are in here? So these are cod and, and haddock eggs. We get these from the fishery in Alaska, okay. and in the North Pacific, uh, and. Uh, fish eggs are just a really Packed good source nutrition. of nutrition. Yeah, right. just full of amino acids and proteins and fats. Mm -hmm. And just an excellent thing to get animals like Anthias to start eating and just really finicky, tough fish. Mm -hmm. The other cool thing about this product, Roe, is that you can feed it to corals. So it's a yeah. great crossover. Mm -hmm. It's right in that particle range mm -hmm. where fish go wild from it. Everything from big fox face and tangs all down to the little tiny gobies that we have within our reef. Um, and, and, and corals from SPS all on up, yep. you know, to, to big, large poly LPS, to, to gorgonians, NPS corals, things like that. So this one is like our crossover food, you would say, between fish and invertebrates. And, and this is like one of our third most popular products. And so if you haven't tried the fish eggs yet, anyone out there, definitely yeah. give it a go. This one is good for at least nine months. Nine months. Refrigerated, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. And then let's see, let's take a quick look over here. You have an Arctic pod. Can you explain a little bit more? Yeah, this is a different kind of copepod. This is um, a calanoid copepod. So these are animals that live in the open ocean. They don't really live uh, coastal or right. intercoastal. So these are like more that. like so, cold water. Yeah, these are, these are more of a cold water. These yeah. are like harvested in the Scandinavia region. Um, wow. And so they have a very rich lipid content. They're also nice and red, and that's yeah. they get that pigmentation from the phytoplankton that they consume out in the ocean. Yeah. And carotenoids are an excellent source of nutrition. Do you and, mention carot carotenoids, and, and I see the coloration. Does that also right. enhance the, the, the red or pink colors of the fish? Yeah, the absolutely. Yeah, it would enhance pigmentation um, in fish, just like it does in, like, flamingos. Right, you know, right. Flamingos eat the shrimp that the shrimp ate the phytoplankton, then they get the carotenoids into their body and you, it shows the through the plumage. Uh, and so with some animals, carotenoids yeah. 
uh, that come from the diet definitely are helpful with pigmentation. For sure. And, and also carotenoids with the antioxidant properties can help fish heal, mm -hmm. can help fish become more tolerant of stress, right. make them more robust. Yep. Um, and copepods are just a natural source of that. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, well, this is a bigger this is a bigger animal. Yeah. Um, you know, these these are like in the three millimeter range, three mm -hmm. three thousand microns, so yeah. like twice the size of a tiger pod. Um, and again, uh, uh, this one has a shorter shelf life, so this one's like four four months. Okay. Right around that, um, and only because this is a more complex organism, there's more fats and things that you know can break down. So gotcha. this is a short shorter shelf life than most of the products. Gotcha. Gotcha almost forgot about the other live pod that you guys sell, the Apex pods. Can you tell me a little bit about them? Yeah, these, these guys are great. Yeah, Apex pods, Apocyclops, Panamensis. Mm -hmm. um, they are a copepod that's native to the Gulf of Mexico, northern South America, down to Brazil, um, all throughout the Everglades, up into the Carolinas, wide range of distribution. Yeah. Um, and these animals are, we, we, we were trying to find a copepod that we would be certain that it would populate a tank. Once it's in there, it's there forever. Yep. And it's part of your biodiversity, part of your ecosystem. Right. Because tigger pods, a lot of times, get tend to get eaten before they can keep up with reproducing themselves. Um, so they get, you know, they get eaten faster than they can reproduce themselves, basically. They're much larger, they're more conspicuous, nice and red. Apex pods are much smaller. They're like a third to a quarter the size yeah. of a tigger pod. They don't have that intense red coloration. Yeah. They're still very nutritious, still a good live food source mm -hmm. for mandarins and other finicky fish. Yeah. But these guys, with their size and fast reproduction, yeah. are more likely to become a permanent uh, addition member to not only your your di biodiversity but your cleanup crew yeah because they eat nuisance algae yeah they'll eat diatoms they'll also eat cyano they'll eat dinoflagellates wow. they're very opportunistic they're, yeah. they're very hardy you know when one thing's limited they just switch over to something else right uh, and and so they you know they'll blend into the tank into the gravel into the substrate you'll mm -hmm. sometimes see them on the glass yeah uh, they, they work fine in a refugium, and mm -hmm. they will basically invade every square inch of your system. You, you're not going to see too many of these guys in retail stores. The retailers mm -hmm. are getting them in and selling them rapidly because yeah. they can't keep them in the refrigerator. Uh, these guys don't really like cold temps. And so you will see some tinted bottles with some green tint in them. That's phyto. And that's actually live phyto that I put mm -hmm. in there with them. Yeah. It's nanochloropsis. It's one of the most popular ones. That it's really easy to grow. Yeah. Um, and so I put a lot of live phytoplankton in there so that they have something to eat before yeah. they can be ad added to somebody's aquarium. Gotcha. Man, I really didn't know a lot about the, these pods. Like a lot of the things that you talked about, for example, eating you know, cyanobacteria, eating diatoms. You know, I mean, those are like a lot of stuff that a lot of hobbyists go through. I mean, everybody goes through the ugly stage at first. Yeah. Copepods are a piece of the puzzle. So, right. you know, we, there's so many different things, uh, variables that go into having a good reef tank. Right. And so. When we say that copepods eat nuisance algae, yeah. eat dinoflagellates, we don't we don't want people to think, okay, I'll just add copepods and it'll clean all that up. Right. Um, they're a part of the solution. They're right. not the total solution. Right. So people have to be aware of that. So. It's a good piece of puzzle to have in your aquarium because you know they, like you said, they're very opportunistic and they'll eat whatever they can and clean up that you know piece naturally. So right. it, instead of relying on chemicals, I think it's doing. By doing it organically, I mean, it, you're doing mimicking mother nature much more efficiently that way. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a great point. Yeah, doing it organically and naturally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Chad, for your time and you know, spending some time to explain all about your products. I certainly learned a couple of new things today, and I'll be incorporating it into my own aquarium. So thank you so much, Chad, for your time, and I hope you have a fantastic show. Thank you.